Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's Kabonster, the owner of Tele Mobile Phone Repair, and today I have something very special for you guys. This is an obliterated iPhone 12. If you can see, the back glass is destroyed, and on top of that, the frame is broken. Now, I've seen a lot of big YouTubers and big tech channels talking about how the iPhone 12 isn't fixable. Well, guess what? It is fixable. And today, I'm gonna show you exactly how. So come with me as I give it the Tele Touch. Let's go. Let's bring this in for a closer look. As you can see, the bulk of the damage happened up top, and we have some hairline cracks running down the entirety of the back glass. And the bulk of the damage happened to the frame right here on the side. This thing was broken and separated, and the structural integrity is gone. Thankfully, the screen is still okay. That's one of the most expensive parts on this phone. And it seems like everything is fine on the inside. It looks like there's no internal damage. The cameras are working fine. The flash is working fine. And normally, in a situation like this, the best thing to do is to just replace the entire frame. That would include a new glass, and then you'd have pretty much a brand new phone and a perfect seal when you put the screen back on there. Here's a perfect example. Right here I have an 11 Pro Max housing replacement. I'll be using this for the repair on this phone. This thing, as you can see, very badly bent. I wouldn't feel comfortable reusing this frame just because I would have a very hard time trying to seal a new screen onto this frame and maintain the water and dust resistance. You know, just make sure that it's a good repair that'll last and will be good long term for the customer. Now, the thing is, in this situation, with this iPhone 12 being so new, manufacturers haven't had the time to produce replacement frames yet. I expect them to be out in the market within a year from now. And one of the first things that I asked the customer was, do they have Apple Care? Do they have any kind of warranty or insurance to trade this thing out? Because my preferred option is not an option at the moment. I let the customer know the situation and I asked if they had any better options, but this is what we're working with and we're gonna do the best that we can with the current situation. So let's get started. So first things first, we'll turn this off. Then I'll grab my Penelope screwdriver and start with the bottom two screws. I'll grab my heat gun and work my way around to soften the adhesive. We just want it hot to the touch, but not too hot. Just enough to loosen the adhesive between the frame and the screen. So then I'll grab my suction cup and I'll begin pulling up on the screen. I'll grab my pry tool and work my way around, cutting the adhesive and pushing the screen out of its place. I have noticed that the iPhone 12 has a deeper lip on the screen than all previous models. So that's something to keep in mind when you're fixing one of these. Just wanna very carefully work my way around all the edges. Then this thing opens up like a book to the left. Now that's something unique with the iPhone 12 series. If you haven't fixed an iPhone 12 yet, keep that in mind. Definitely don't want to tear these cables. So then I'll grab my tri-tip screwdriver, start removing these brackets, the cable covers, whatever you want to call them. Now the first thing you want to unplug is the battery. Then we'll go ahead and disconnect the screen connectors and the proximity sensor flex cable. And there we go. Now we can set the screen aside and take a look at what's going on here. So right here, I just need to bring this in as close as I can. I'll try to adhere it. Uh, the plan is to make this as flat as possible so that when I put it on the laser machine, uh, the laser is able to hit the back evenly all across. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a little bit of B7000 industrial strength glue. I like to put it on my mat and use some tweezers if it's a very small area like this. I 
And then I'm also going to put just a little bit of super glue. Because this B7000 is a slow setting glue. And if I mix it with a little bit of super glue, it's kind of like using Gorilla Glue. Why didn't I just use Gorilla Glue from the first place? Guys, help, I got Gorilla Glue stuck inside my phone. <laughs> I need $50,000. <laughs> All right, now that we have the glue compound put in there, let's go ahead and hold it in position and count to, I don't know, 30 Mississippi. Let's see if it holds. Honestly, it feels like it needs a little bit more. And I'm also going to use my air gun just to try to lessen the cure time. All right, if this doesn't hold, nothing will hold it. Shit! Ah, uh, okay. Well, this is honestly the straightest I can make it um, before putting it on the laser machine. It should be fine. Now again, this is not my preferred method, but this is the only option we have at the moment. I wouldn't do this if the customer wasn't okay with it. So, that being said, let's go ahead and take it to the laser machine. So now thankfully I was able, I realized that I'm able to secure it in place with my centering fixture. It just held it in really tight. So now we're just gonna give it a run under the laser and get this back glass off of here. What this laser machine does is it vaporizes the adhesive that sits in between the glass and the frame. So let's get started. Give you an idea of what, what it looks like behind these glasses. It's kind of like welding, but a lot safer. But still, you shouldn't be looking directly at the laser. I looked at it for about a week before I got these glasses, and I got a little light in my eye that just wouldn't go away. I'm sure you've seen some of my videos before where I'm doing these uh, back glass videos, cr the crunch time videos. I speed those up a hundred times. So this actually takes anywhere from like six to eight minutes per run on the machine. This might be your first time seeing the actual speed of this thing. No noises. <laughs> I'm just gonna let it do its thing. And there we go. We vaporized all the glue in between the frame and the glass. Now it's crunch time. Let's get all this glass off of here. Before we get started, you have to wear safety glasses. Well, you don't, I do. Definitely gotta wear our Kevlar gloves to protect our hands from the glass. So we'll grab our blade and we'll get started. Now I never show this on my TikToks, but when I get close to the wireless charging coil, I like to heat it up because we avoided uh, the wireless charging coil when we were putting it under the laser because if the laser runs over the wireless charging coil, it's gonna damage it. So I just like to put a little bit of heat to loosen up the adhesive that's still holding it together. If I don't do that, I'll risk tearing the wireless charging coil and that's a whole nother world of problems. Now that that's nice and warm, I can go back at it with my blade confidently. Now I've yet to see the MagSafe in person. So I'm a little excited right now. If I notice the wireless charging coil lifting at all, I back off immediately. Uh, and that lets me know that I need to apply more heat or go at it from a different angle. So right now the wireless charging coil is lifting up a little bit, so I gotta be really careful so I don't tear it. Also, I'm gonna apply more heat.
The video you see on TikTok is highly edited, sped up a lot. So this is the first time you get to see exactly how long it takes. It's a very delicate process. And if you wanna keep it safe, you gotta go slow. Just be patient. So I'm in kind of a sticky situation here uh, where I have the MagSafe components stuck to the glass and man, hmm, this is a little different. If you can see down in there, there's a little cable. I'm not sure what that is yet. There's a little cable attached to the glass. So I have to be really careful because I don't want to damage any components. I have to take this very slow as this is my first iPhone 12 back glass. It looks like they changed a few things. But that's no problem. I'll get it done. I don't really have any access from this side, so I th I'm just gonna grab the glass right here. And hold it down right here. I'm just gonna break it off. There we go. That's one way to do it. They said it's not repairable. Challenge accepted. Now the reason why I'm being so careful is that it looks like all these MagSafe components are connected and there might be some kind of wire running through all of them and I don't want to risk pulling up and damaging a component. So again, I, I just have to go really slow. Looks like they definitely made it a lot harder. I can see why some people are saying it's not fixable, but I see this as challenge accepted. Okay, it looks like one, one of these components came off. Okay, thankfully, Thankfully that doesn't affect anything. So what I was afraid of earlier was this magnet right here being connected to a wire, but thankfully it came off without damaging that wire right there. So I should be able to replace it, just put it right back down right there without damaging anything. So that makes me feel a lot more comfortable about the rest of this. Hopefully there aren't any connections like this waiting for me right here. I doubt it. So this thing is almost off. And there we go. That's the part I was worried about, but looks like there's nothing to worry about. Everything appears to be intact. I just have to re replace two MagSafe sections that came off, but that shouldn't be an issue. I'll put this aside. I'll have to pull those off of here. This was what was being lifted up earlier. And uh, thankfully that didn't come off with the glass. All right, now we gotta get up here. Slow and steady wins the race. Now I used to use my little mini Dremel tool, uh, but I actually just bought a little center punch tool. So I'm gonna go grab that and try that for this glass right here. This part right here, it's a little bit thicker. So it's always harder to get out. We have to crush it somehow so we can get all that glass out from in between the camera lenses. So I just got this new punch tool and I've yet to use it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the weakest position and work my way up from there if it doesn't work. There we go, all right. That worked pretty well. All right, that worked very well. Let's go ahead and get the rest of this glass off. Pretty sure I just got glass in my ear. Need to get some earplugs. <laughs> if it was easy, everyone would do it. Let me give this another hit with this. Man, that thing is awesome.
Looks like the iPhone 12 has a deeper lip on the back too. Uh, the lip on everything else before was a lot narrower, shallower, narrower. <laughs> now I got the majority of the glass off. I'm gonna get the rest of this adhesive off of here. I actually need to go put it in the laser machine uh, for a second round to get all this excess glue off. So let's go ahead and head over there. So this time around we'll use the fume extractor because we're gonna hit the glue directly and that's gonna cause a lot of fumes to rise. So this just sucks it up and filters it out so we don't breathe in anything toxic. So let's get this thing started. After round two in the laser machine, this thing came out looking much cleaner. I have almost all of the glass off of here. There's just a tiny little bit right on top of the microphone right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead with my little mini Dremel tool and get that off of there. Might have got a little carried away there. That was fun. All right, now all that's left to do is to re-adhere the glass to the frame and put everything back together, but we're still facing the issue of the frame being bent out of place. And I don't want there to be any kind of pressure being placed on the back glass because I don't want it to be more prone to break again. So I was thinking for a bit, what if I add something to improve the structural integrity? What if I add a piece of metal from this side of the frame to this side of the frame? So I saw two points, one right here and one right here. I unscrewed these and then I found this piece of metal and I grinded out the holes to make it big enough to fit right here. I also bent it to add a certain amount of tension. So let's go ahead and put that in there and, and see how much it improves. Okay, not 100% fixed, but that's definitely better. That should clear the screen. I don't think this will be an issue when we're trying to put everything back together. It sits in a position that is away from everything else, and it's just holding the two pieces of the frame together. So that's definitely better than having no kind of reinforcement. I'm thinking of just putting some glue right there and leaving it for a couple of hours in hopes that it reseats the frame in its original position like this. We got really close, it's a little bit off. Just so I can be comfortable giving this back to the customer, I'd want it to look like that. So I'm gonna put some more glue and put it in the laser machine. So I was having trouble fusing the frame together because I didn't have a proper clamp to hold it in this position. I only have clamps that hold it like this. But I realized my automatic centering fixture on my laser machine would hold it perfectly. So I went ahead and re-adhered it and I let it sit over the weekend and now this frame is way, way straighter than what it was. This looks like it's good enough to put the back glass on there without worrying about any pressure points being placed on the back glass from it being bent. So let's go back to the workstation and wrap up this repair. All right, back from the laser machine. This thing is looking so much better, nice and straight, perfect for a new back glass. Now, when I was removing the back glass, I was going really slow because I noticed the iPhone 12 charging coil it has a little extra wire right here that's right in front of the MagSafe strips. And a few of the MagSafe strips, they got pulled off with the glass and I was afraid that I was destroying the coil, but thankfully I didn't. Uh, so now all that I have to do is put these strips back in their position. I have to fight the magnets a little bit, but that's all I have to do before cleaning this up a little bit more and putting the back glass on. All right, we got the MagSafe strips back on with some good old super glue and some tweezers. Now all that's left is cleaning this thing out all the way before we replace the back glass. I'm gonna 
wanted to go ahead and test fit the frame or test fit the glass. That's much better. There we go. All right, now we just have to put some adhesive on here and clamp this back glass down. We can't forget to transfer over the tiny little microphone mesh. It's all on the little details. Nice. That looks good. So there's a bit of bad news. Unfortunately, the frame, the glue didn't hold up. Oh. Uh, so I gotta start all over. I removed the reinforcement that I had right here and I'm gonna replace it with a different one that connects from this screw hole to this screw hole. So I was looking through some extra pieces of metal and I think I'm just gonna modify this one to fit perfectly. I just need to trace it uh, and line it up and cut it out and hopefully it works. All right, so I'm actually kind of glad that the first way didn't work out because now that I've put a sheet of metal on the, on the side of the wall, it's actually holding so much better. Uh, without any glue right now, this thing is practically perfect. All I have to do right now is take this little piece of metal that I put in there back out and then shave it down so that the screen can fit flush on the frame. But man, that, that just goes to show sometimes things go wrong so that they can go better. That's beautiful. All right, so I shaved that down quite a bit. Now it sits flush uh, without poking up out of the frame and getting in the way of the screen. Take a look at how the frame sits right now. It's off to the side, and it would be really hard to put a back glass in here without fear of breaking it. So let's see what happens when I screw this on. Look at that. Sits nice and flush underneath the frame. So running into the screen won't be an issue anymore. I shaved it down perfectly. Uh, I utilized the screw from the toggle switch, the, the vibrate toggle switch right here. Uh, and I believe this is for an antenna right here. Uh, I don't think I'll have any issues with the antenna, but man, this is, this is as close as we can get to original. I mean, this, I'm so glad that the original method didn't work. Because this, man, I feel so much better about this. This is not going anywhere. You're going nowhere. All right. <laughs> well, now it's time to do the rest of the repair. So I put a little bit of extra glue where the crack was just to fill it in and make sure that there's a nice seal. Also, I'm putting some behind this plate just in case there's any vibrations. I don't want it to sound metallic. Putting this glue right behind the plate should solve that problem. Thinking ahead here, fixing the problem before it starts. All right. There we go. A perfect flush fit. Man, that's beautiful. All right, and there we have it, folks. The back glass is sealed onto the frame. This thing is looking nice and straight, and everything else is working as good as new. This was one wild ride, and I'm glad you guys were here with me. Thankfully, this repair had no effect on the MagSafe capability. This thing, as you can see, hooks right on there and charges right up, so we are good to go. It's nice. And there we have it, folks. From what was once a completely destroyed iPhone 12, we were able to take a look at this thing and say, you know what, let's give it a shot. Most stores would have said, they don't make the parts for this repair. It's not fixable. But we took it as a challenge, 
we were creative with it and we got it to work. Man, this thing looks like nothing ever happened. So if you guys made it this far into the video, I want to thank you so much for supporting the channel. And Javier, thank you for sending your phone all the way from Florida. We're going to be shipping this back out to you right now. And if you guys want to see more content like this, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and keep on coming back for some more content. Thank you so much.